All right, welcome back. Uh, second high order bit this morning. Uh, David Orban from the Humanity and Singularity University. You have the floor. May I have the slides up, please? Posso avere le slide? Thank you very much. So, uh, Thank you and welcome uh, to this presentation. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, what are the drivers of excellence, in my opinion, in communication and participation in learning. My name is David Orban. I'm a chairman of Humanity Plus, an advisor to the Singularity University. And what I want to list to you today is um, a series of uh, starting points, maybe some more provocative than others, uh, to learn about uh, how the future is going to be hopefully full of opportunities and obviously critical reassessments as we heard, uh, but confirming the fundamental usefulness of the new tools that we have been developing for uh, decades. Uh, which have been able and teach us uh, a very large amount of uh, pieces of information that we are putting together uh, in uh, manners that are incredibly fertile. And of course, uh, we know this doesn't mean that the knowledge that we have gathered uh, represents final answers uh, to a limited amount of questions. We know uh, that this number of pieces of information is nothing but a series of building blocks for new questions that we can and must uh, be able to combinatorially explore. And uh, since these building blocks uh, enable us to represent a much larger amount of new questions, in between, obviously, there is an increasing gap of ignorance. Uh, but this we must cherish because uh, it is a measure of our progress. There are unintended consequences. There are definitely actions that we uh, today carry through proudly uh, for our achievements that in the future will be um, put in a totally different context. An empire that has disappeared, uh, one of its crowning achievements, a building that survived for 2,000 years after its final utility has been expanded uh, to those who commanded the building to be erected to their glory. What this tells us is that we have to be careful in how we allocate the resources that we uh, have at our disposal, since these resources are not unlimited. It is possible that in the future, maybe even in the near future, we'll be able and uh, reorganize, reevaluate the allocation and the use of the resources that we have. But in the meantime, it is extremely important to concentrate and understand where we can uh, turn and how we have to invest one of the most precious resources that we today have, which is our attention. The limited amount of time that we have, 
which we can devote and multiply with the careful application of the tools that we are developing. These tools today are undeniably computer mediated, which is itself a somewhat um, overused term, a term that we have to learn and uh, uh, generalize since uh, from what we used to call computers, bulky uh, or even flexible, but still uh, limited form factor objects are now transforming into something that is much more flexible in our hands, in our pockets, and soon uh, in a number of units that are going to require fundamentally new ways of being managed. So as we learn how to design, deploy, manage, and in general take advantage of these tools, we must not forget that they have to have a purpose. Uh, the tool's purpose reflects on the purpose that we must have and concentrate to keep and to realign, to reevaluate and redeploy as we go ahead and uh, in a manner that is, I hope, universally recognized as uh, irretrievable, as a, a route that we cannot uh, return from that we cannot turn our backs towards. Uh, we uh, create future civilizations, future worlds that we can afford to live in. Our current situation is quite unique. We have heard uh, in previous presentations uh, examples of uh, this uniqueness and I think it is important to reaffirm that even if in a venue like this, uh, in a conference like this, we are talking about institutions that uh, are trying to understand how to adapt to new realities after having been able and uh, be at the service of humanity for hundreds of years. The adaptation that now we have to make cannot wait for additional hundreds of years. Unless we are capable of educating, but even more importantly, learning quickly, efficiently, and effectively um, our capability of adapting to the needs of uh, the world around us will be insufficient and will prove itself to be fatally inadequate. Now, the applications of the tools that we use for learning and for finding new routes for becoming sustainably adapted to the world around us are going to be numerous, uh, unbounded, unless bounded by our lack of creativity, our lack of uh, inventing new ways and there can be examples of several specialties, uh, specialties of new types of communication, of new types of uh, fundamental sources of opportunity. We um, must not forget uh, that our modern civilization was born because of the excess energy uh, first in uh, nourishment then in transportation which itself meant communication and unless we can sustain this excess energy uh, the whole fundamental of our current modern civilization is going to fall the same way uh, we built um, a society and a, an entire social contract which was based on certain balances of responsibility between what the individual was called upon to do and what the rest of society was ready to do for the individual, even against, oftentimes, the individual's will. 
and this balance is now being re-evaluated as society turns back to the individual and says, well, for your health, for your future, uh, for your social benefits, uh, it is time that you try and take things in your hands. So, together with uh, the public services, what used to be the case is that the main actors of uh, uh, these changes were corporations. And today, not only society at large, but corporations themselves are being disrupted and due to these fundamental disruptions, proving themselves together with institutions uh, often enable to adapt with the rapidity that is being required. But at the same time, individuals are being empowered enormously to provide an almost unlimited series of solutions to nuclear problems, but also problems of a larger uh, magnitude. So I would like to uh, propose that what we are looking forward to be able and live, uh, not in the next few centuries, not even in the next few decades, but literally uh, within the next few years in front of us, uh, is an important qualitative change, where in the planetary coevolution that we have been living through for the past 10,000 years since our technological civilization started to exert its uh, now undeniably defining influence on the planet, uh, we are now uh, in a position to start and give machines the autonomy uh, that they need to enable us to be free to be human if we choose to, or if we aim to this, to actually try and transcend and to move beyond what used to be traditional definitions of the human condition. Uh, there are very uh, clear signs that the acceleration of technological progress is not stopping. And I would like to uh, suggest that uh, it is time that even those institutions that are uh, used to afford and live with uh, the times of centuries looked at the examples that are available and energically emulate them. As I was sitting uh, in this hall and listening to the previous speakers, looked around myself and realized that uh, the people in the audience that you're listening to me are uh, in your 30s, 40s and 50s. Uh, I realized that we have the opportunity to be the revolutionaries because the powers that be are not in this hall. There are no people that are, or very few people who are uh, in their 60s or 70s. And so many of our institutions are uh, kept in their current state, unable to move on by people who believe uh, that what they have achieved when they were young uh, is the final say in how things should become and how things uh, should stay forever onwards. So if we are able and take on this role, uh, if we accept that sometimes uh, even cherished institutions cannot be reformed because their rate of adaptation is insufficient for uh, what they ask to achieve, but they must be changed fundamentally, then we can inspire uh, those around us and we can from everyday's activities to quite spectacular announcement or initiatives uh, keep this inspiration so that those coming after us after we have become uh, the old generation uh, can still bring the flame of revolution and inspiration ahead thank you very much
Thank you. Uh, one or two quick questions for David Orban. Okay. If not, thank you again. Thank you. Now we